So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the longest tenured pieces of equipment that I have here in my home theater. And that is my four uh, Polk PSW-10 subwoofers. So like I said in the intro to this video, out of all the equipment that I have here in my home theater, uh, speakers, projector, you know, my DVD, Blu-ray players, gaming PC, whatever, the longest tenured piece of equipment that I've had consistently here in my home theater are the four Polk PSW-10 subwoofers that I've got here uh, in the front of the room. And next to the pair of couches that are here, the, the, these subwoofers are the oldest thing that I have here that I've owned from the start and kept through the entire time in my home theater. Uh, and I'm talking about equipment and actual stuff there. Yes, some of my VHS tapes and figures I've had since I was little. But in terms of actual home theater use equipment, uh, these are the longest tenured things that I've had here. I have four of them, and I bought them all through Amazon, and two of them I bought in 20, I think 2016, and then the other two I bought in 2017, and I bought them all four through warehouse deals. Uh, they varied in price a little bit. Uh, they averaged around $100 a piece. I think they were closer to 100 when I bought my first two in 2016. And then these last two, which I don't know which ones are which up here. Uh, but the last two that I bought in 2017 were like $80 a piece. And like I said, I've had them ever since. I've never swapped them out. I've had them the entire time. And uh, they're great budget subwoofers. Uh, now, you're not going to get the level of... Uh, deep bass output that you're going to get with like, you know, an SVS Prime uh, subwoofer or something that's, you know, professional, like JBL professional grade or, you know, another real high end uh, subwoofer. But for what they are in the like $100, $150, maybe even up to like $200 range, these are like the best subwoofers you can buy at that point, barring finding a used like high-end one for cheap at like you know uh ebay listing or um you know facebook marketplace or something but these are great subwoofers for what they are and my current configure configuration that i have set up here i've got them stacked and that couples them and allows for more bass output although the bass isn't maybe as uh neutral or as evenly dispersed around the room as they would be if they were just sitting singularly somewhere in the room, especially if they weren't just here on the front stage. Because I've got two under my left speaker here, well, at my right front speaker here, and then two under my left speaker over there. And originally when my room was flip-flopped the other way, like I've talked about in my other videos, I had my subwoofers spaced out a little more throughout the room. I had uh, basically them four on the sidewall. So I had two kind of up front on the sidewall, two kind of deeper on the sidewalls, and then like two in the front and then two like deeper in the sidewall and kind of played with it like that. And maybe had a little more even bass response with that, but the output levels weren't as high. We're doing them like this, uh, which originally I had these just stacked one here, one to the left of my center, one to the right of my center, and then one under the other one, my other front main channel. And that was all right, too. And the way my room's set up, having them across the front stage is, you know, decent uh, for what it is. Uh, but like I said, these are great little budget subwoofers. These are, I believe, 10-inch subwoofers. Uh, there are some videos out there, you know, of different channels that have done actual research and actually tested a bunch of subwoofers and found that these were the best bass response for the price point uh, that gave you the most neutral, uh, least boomy, most kind of flat, even response, which these are only going to get down to like, I think at the lowest they measured was like 
30 or 40 hertz in that range there. I mean, it's not like you're going to get down to, you know, like 20 hertz or 10 hertz or something real deep. Uh, but for what I use it here, you know, it's it's good. You know, it, it's perfectly fine. And I've been so accustomed to having multiple subwoofers of the same brand, unless I could find at least two of a better, higher quality one used somewhere, I probably don't have any interest in getting rid of these because they, they do what they're tasked with doing. And especially now that I have these DCM speakers that put out a decent level of bass, I don't really have to use my subwoofers to fill in a whole lot of other bass frequencies above or outside of the range that they're able to produce. And you'll notice they don't have any covers on them. That's because one of these, I don't know which one of the four, had a messed up uh, little plug here for where the uh, little grommet thing goes in for the grill cover so it would rattle because it was broken uh, so i just pulled them off <laughs> so that you wouldn't get that rattle every time the subwoofer was engaged it became distracting and annoying you know so i removed them and yes it'd be nice if these were all black you know that might look the, with the aesthetic a little bit better but the black and silver is still you know kind of neat and kind of you know fine for what it is it doesn't distract too much from anything else um so yeah, I can't really say too much more. These are great value uh, subwoofers. They have their own power supply on here and they have a gain and a volume control and a phase control all on the back of the subwoofer. So you can kind of tweak, you know, where you want the crossover and the gain and the level and all that stuff at and becomes, you know, somewhat customizable like that. And since they have their own independent power supply, they don't kick on and off as the sound gets to them, like some of the other subwoofers I had purchased over the years that then resold uh, just to sell that I didn't really keep too much. Like the JBL PB10 I talked about in my previous videos, that one would kick on and off as the sound hit the subwoofer. And because the power supply was kind of weird on that one, it would buzz every time it would kick on and off. And it just, again, became too distracting, you know, and was kind of unusable for the time I dabbled with it and then I just sold it off. But yeah, these are great subwoofers and uh, definitely worth the value, you know, and you can find them, like I said, in the range of like 50 to to $100 still to this day on the used market. And a lot of times Amazon or Crutchfield will even sell them new in that price range as well. So, you know, it's definitely for what it is, you know, there's definitely stuff better out there, obviously, but for what you get out of them, they're the best budget uh, subwoofer you can buy, you know. So that's going to wrap it up with this. This is kind of a short video because there's, I haven't had a whole long history of all these other uh, subwoofers here in my home theater. It's basically been these the entire time. So, uh, but again, I just want to say thanks to everyone that's viewed my content, that's liked, subscribed, uh, you know, commented. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, I've gotten way more traction and viewership than I thought I would at this point, you know, for just kind of a side hobby that I do on my free time. Uh, so I just want to say thanks again to everybody and be on the lookout. I'm trying to film a bunch of videos here all at once so that I can get them spaced out, you know, on my feed going forward. Uh, so be on the lookout for some more videos and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.